Sad little one Doesn't wanna feel alone She hates the trash that spawned her She hates a broken home She likes it when I say aliens Made homo sapiens She likes it when I talk Martians And the chariots of the gods The blood of the unearthly Better than the blood of the ugly Bread for more than just civility Bread for more than this burned out hole Okay, and we're rolling on Paranormal Tuesday. Hope everybody's doing well. We started off with a little bit of Chariots of the Gods there. And uh, just ready to talk about dreams tonight on uh, Paranormal Tuesday. See you on the other side live. And, of course, I am joined by Wendy. Let me bring you in here. And there she be. I was waiting so anxiously. Yes. All right. How's it going? Uh, good, good. Okay. Am, am I sounding a little bit loud? I can bring it down a little uh, bit. Just, I'm distorting. Sound a little, yeah, a little, little distortion. Okay. I'm right. bringing that down now. Um, so you guys uh, in the audience always let us know because we can't always hear what we sound like. So uh, your help uh, really does improve. It, makes the, a it improves the program, doesn't it? It does. All right. Um, a couple of quick shout outs. Number one, I'm finally here on a Tuesday. Hi, guys. Well, hi, Andy. Andy. Quick. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yep, and let's start off with some Patreon. Patreon, Oofda's right away. Andy, one, two, three, Oofda. Oofda. 
Iris, holla! One, two, three, oofta for Iris. The rainbow goddess. Mark. One, two, three, oofta, senor. Oofta. Sharon. Ah, Hello, Sharon. happy Tuesday. Iris says I'm still loud, so let me bring that down. Oh. You know, I turned the gain all the way up instead of all the way down. So that was me being very silly. Okay. Next up, Pam. One, two, three, oof, da, da, you. Pam. Cheers. George and Terry. Oh. Eins, zwei, dry. Cheers, guys. Oof, duh. I'm getting so hydrated mm -hmm. here. Yeah, me too. <laughs> hydrated for trouble. Ah, uh, Terry. Yes. Okay. Cheers to you. So, um... I hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving, however you choose to celebrate it, or choose not to celebrate it, as, as what, you know, uh, you might have been under lock and key. Um, however, though, what we were all able to do, like the one thing they can't take from us, is our dreams. That's right. Turning inward. Yeah, you know, this is the first time I've ever... Um, I mean, this is like the like all week I kept a pretty good dream journal of the times I actually did dream. Now I have to say I didn't dream every single night. Um, there was well, you didn't remember your right. Dream there was two nights where I didn't remember my dreams. I had a couple as well that I uh, actually there was one where I didn't write it. I did have a dream and I didn't write it down right away, and then I forgot it. So. And that's kind of the lesson I think when it comes yeah. to dream recall is that is that writing it down. And we'll talk more about this. Um, when we get to ideas for this week's experiment as we move into um, the next week. But yeah, I mean, it was like, so Wendy, did you write write it down like on a pen and a paper or did you uh, type it out? I actually just, in my phone, I created a draft email okay. <laughs> to myself and then I just continued to edit that day after day so I had it because I, I, I always have my phone mm -hmm. nearby so I just grab it and then while I'm laying there trying to recall but I, I have to say that I think I got better at it as uh, the week went on I think my skill improves dream recollection is improving because I discovered even this morning that um, like because I woke up and I had the dream kind of in my head and then I started forgetting it so I would like close my eyes and just kind of relax, and then it would come back to me. Okay. Like piece by piece, because there's a lot. Uh, we'll we'll see. <laughs> there's a lot of different scenes in these dreams that I've been having. Okay. So. Well, um, Andy, I don't know what's real and what's a dream anymore. Long story involves my ex. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'm glad. Okay, I'm glad the volume's worked out now. Um, well, we'll talk a little bit about reality testing. Um, in a little bit and we talk about some ideas that we can all do for an experiment for next week um, but yes that idea of like what's real and what's not that is something if you're interested in in dreamland is wondering if we're actually in reality right now um, is one of the things you do uh, right that's what people they, how about you I, did you uh, did you get get any better at recalling your dreams as you did it except for except for last night Okay. That was the one time like I was a complete bust. I woke because I, I didn't sleep a lot last night. Like we had our we had a radio show, and then um, I worked on stuff for a while, and then I went to bed too late, and then I might have dreamed about something. But by the time I woke up six hours later, I was like, "Yeah, oh, did I did I dream of anything?" Mm -mm. <laughs> um, however, um, I do have some. There was plenty of dreams. Uh, starting, you know, from last Wednesday to now. So if anybody's images had gotten in there, um, there was plenty of time. And the, the whole thing about when we, when we talk about sending messages in dreams or, you know, sending messages to someone's dreams, um, time doesn't seem to be of any particular matter anyway. So if you would have put your intention and sent us the email afterwards... If we would have would have had a dream beforehand that had something to do with it, that wouldn't be unusual when it comes oh, to these things. Because whoa, that's 
That's a little weird. Right. Well, I mean, people have have dreams that have happened in the future. Like I said, I. Yeah. I mean, and mine wasn't serious. Like, you know, if you could really predict the future, wouldn't you try to predict the stock market or whatever and not the color of your friend's sled? Right? That kind of thing. Um, and so, uh, but yeah, there's like time um, doesn't seem to be a factor in it, at least in when people talk about the things that they've seen or if they've seen the future um, hmm. or glimpses of the past. So, and, you know, and Mark. Uh, he shared in the Patreon, uh, uh, in the Patreon community, um, he did his own dream journal the day after. Yeah. And I thought that was great. Um, that was cool. Because it's just a fun... It's, Go ahead, Wayne. It, it's interesting um, trying to record dreams, too, I think, because it, it doesn't always unfold like a nice, clean narrative. Mm-hmm. And there are things that you can, that are difficult to explain. You know, because they're, they're thoughts that are happening, whatever, or thoughts or <laughs> whatever it is your brain's doing uh, that are just happening. And so, so it's, I, I don't know, I found it a good exercise to try to like verbalize in a way that I could explain it to somebody sure. else because so a lot of times it was not easy to do because, you know, the scenery is weird and it's morphing and changing and it feels normal in the dream. But when you try to describe it in this waking world <laughs> it's well it's constantly changing is the thing it's difficult. It, and new people are constantly showing up and um i what i think we should do is we should jump in and maybe show everybody uh the images that were sent Ooh, okay I haven't looked at them so yet, let's start i just looked at them i just looked at them five minutes ago that's the first time i looked cool. at them so i you know i had okay. no idea what people sent. so let's start with the images people sent over the course of the week and then maybe we can go through we'll go through our dream journals and We'll see if any of them match up. Okay? So um, let's start with that. Uh, Let me start a new scene here, and let's bring over uh, one of the images. Let's see. Can Wendy and I be in the corner? I don't know. Can we? I think think we can. Hey, 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 there we are. (laughs) All right. There you are. Hi. Yeah. I'm I'm a wee now. Yeah. I'm little. Okay, I'm going to stick you in the corner, see if I can get in there too. Hey, nobody puts Wendy in nobody the corner. Nobody puts Wendy in the corner, right? <laughs> Actually, you do. You I just did. did. Yep, there you are. There you be. Oh, my, my green screen. The illusion, it's gone. Oh, no. Okay. So let me, uh, let me, ju- let me jump in here uh, and take us out. Okay, bye. Bye. Oh, bye. Um. Let's well, it was fun recalling my dreams because I never really noticed just how many, uh, it like symbol not symbols but like objects. Okay. Because I was paying, I was trying to pay closer attention to symbology and whatnot. Yeah. With the knowledge that we we're going to be receiving images of things. Right, and let me uh, grab the first one. Here's one that uh, my sister sent for me. That. Oh thing. my God! She's trying to give you nightmares. <laughs> I think so. So I don't know exactly what that is. Good. It looks like a demon head. Right. But it's pretty weird. Yeah, I wonder. And so I don't, uh, yeah, so that, there's that one. Uh, so Allison sent this to me, a demon head. And then uh, for um, Wendy, she sent this for you. A plague doctor. Oh. Wow, that's cool. Okay, so the plague doctor. Let's see if the plague doctor showed up in any of our or anything like that. A, a, you know, a mask with a bird face. Um, so that was from Allison. Now Andy, he sent. Let me grab this one. He sent this for me, and he said he random images from his computer. Oh, okay. Sent this for me. So a girl <laughs> hanging out by the hot tub, or just. I like it. That's a good that um, that that may have been in one of my dreams. I'm not sure yet. We got to go back and watch the tape. Um, and for Wendy, Ooh. right? I'm looking at palatial estate. Oh. So um, those are uh, from Andy, and we'll maybe look talk about the houses and stuff like that of what we saw in our dreams. And George sent this. <laughs> oh, that's one of those little instruments, right? Yeah, like the frog you play its back kind of thing. That's cool. 
Yeah. And um, Pam sent this. Oh. A house, the twin chimney house. Oh. Um, and then Terry sent something too, but Terry, the image wasn't in the email. And because I didn't actually look at the emails until right before, sure. uh, it didn't show up. So, okay. So no. those were the images we had to work with uh, right there. So that's our, that's our starting out. Um, so let's go over, okay. We can say the first night of dreaming. So this started on Wednesday. And so, so George sent the first image with the, the frog musical instrument or whatever. Um, on Tuesday night, right after Paranormal Tuesday, and here were my dreams Wednesday morning, from what I can remember. The first thing I wrote down was crabs. So I was having some dream where I was laying down somewhere, and there were hundreds of crabs crawling around me. Uh, yeah, that wasn't a great one. That sounds a little creepy. Um, the second dream I had is that some I was living in an apartment, and... Uh, the apartment was on the first floor, and I saw some guy trying to break in, and he climbed to the roof to try to break into the apartment, and then I jumped upstairs, and I threw him off the roof. Whoa. Um, but he had a sexy girl with him, uh, and so I do remember that, and then I woke up. So maybe that, that could have been, right. been from Andy. Sexy girl. Now, I don't um, remember what she was wearing. If she was wearing anything, so I don't know. If, but we'll see if any bikini tops show up there. Um, oh, Andy, the first one was a screenshot from The Sims, and the second one was a cool mansion, which was in Leavenworth, Washington, if I recall correctly. Okay, so those are the images that Andy sent. And um, nice. Mark said you didn't get mine. Oh, what? oh, wait a minute. I don't see it. And Wendy, if you can take I, I wasn't able to take it yeah, to see it. But if you want to look for Mark Johnson in the uh, emails, yeah. see if it shows up or maybe it didn't. Um, I didn't get it for some reason. Uh, what? And then my other dream on Wednesday was that uh, I was back in high school. Great. But it wasn't my high school. It was somebody else's high school. Um, I was watching a presentation. And this girl starts talking to me. She pretends to have a seizure and needs my help. And then because I was the guy closest to her or whatever, I was, you know, supposed to. Uh, but I knew she was pretending. And I was like, but I was trying to take care of like, like, are you okay kind of thing. Um, but then everybody else knew that she was faking having a seizure. And they were telling like, like you got to run. Get out of here. Um, yeah. And then the last dream, I got locked out of a condo. So that was the last dream I remember was that I locked out of a condo. Um, so, no, I don't see Mark's uh, Mark. What email did you send it to? Otherwise, because you can still share it with us now, and we can. Uh, yeah, we can see if it. I mean, if the intention was there, it shouldn't matter, really. Right. Exactly. So or maybe starting on Wednesday morning, um, those were my dreams. Crabs. Um, okay. threw a guy off the roof, sexy girlfriend, uh, crazy girl, and then locked out of a condo. So those were the main themes. Wendy, what exciting stuff happened to you on Wednesday in your, in your mind? Oh boy. That was the 25th. Okay. Uh, well, I had a couple different dreams. So one, I was auditioning for a musical and the role uh, was where I was in a courtroom taking the stand on trial oh. as like a lawyer gave me kind of a sound of music kind of feeling like the Maria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And then that was just one dream. Then another one was uh, on vacation somewhere like Hawaii, mm. staying in a high rise with family and friends and some random coworkers had a patio balcony. And one day they took the fence down for maintenance so you could just walk right up to the edge where there was a huge drop off and i was terrified okay uh went for a walk with scott and there was a house with a mailbox that had a glittery christmas ornament just sitting on top of okay it. um then we took a side path that led to a lake which i think was lake monona and then there's this tiny little park with a monument that was talking about some sirens siren creatures mm -hmm. like 
lake creatures. And then off in the distance, we could see four actual women in the water that were singing like sirens. Oh, interesting. And then, uh, we had to... One of them was someone we know. I'm not going to... Not going to use real names? Reference any names? Yeah, I'm not going to use real names of mine either. <laughs> but anyway, one, one of them was a woman we know, and um, I grabbed Scott, and we had to run to escape from the sirens. Okay. And then there was an athlete, a female athlete, who I went to see compete. I was very inspired by her. And another friend of ours was there, and we went out for brunch. And then, oh, my God, this is so long. It keeps going and going. Then I was at the shopping mall, and for some reason I went to GameStop. Also, a store that was huge with furniture. And a friend of mine was acting spontaneous, and then in parentheses crazy, and she'd run in and jump on the furniture. They were hosting a holiday party, and we walked All right. and ran into somebody who I think might have been one of the ghost guides from your American Ghost Walks. And okay. she gave us this goopy stuff that was kind of like flubber. We dropped it on the floor, and it had to pick it up. And she was upset and said something about people not pr- appreciating her. And then on the way out, there was a huge staircase. Wait, so you dropped her flubber <laughs> and then she got mad and said she didn't feel appreciated. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. I don't know. I had no idea. Then I, uh, it's a huge staircase, but it was made out of fancy rocks and boulders that you had to climb down. So I was scooching down on my butt and then, cause I was afraid I'd trip and fall. Yeah. And I knocked a pretty big rock loose, and I saw it fall in slow motion, like, toward, because there were people down down there, and I was, like, afraid it was going to hit somebody, but thankfully it didn't. But then when I got uh, to the bottom, people were looking at me like I was a criminal. All right. <laughs> there's, still, there's still a couple more paragraphs, but um, ran into some former co-workers who were in costume as if it were Halloween. Uh, let's see. One of them... Their wife couldn't travel, cause, uh, but she was on a Zoom call on a laptop that was sitting there, and so we were chatting with her. And they were wearing weird outfits, <laughs> shirt shirtless, with some skimpy underpants over their clothing. All right. Uh, then I saw a kiosk that was kind of like like a med tent, and I recognized another friend of ours laying on the floor being tended to. So I ran over to see if she was okay. She was fine, but she needed some medication for something like a migraine, and. Um, and then I was back at home and in the bedroom, we, we have a humidifier that we sure. have recently started using with the dryness of winter. And it was going, but something with the climate made it so that it was snowing in our room. Oh, wow. And I was reaching up and grabbing these perfect snowflakes in our room. So that, that was all one night. Wendy, that's great. It's a lot of detail there. Um, well, I was, that was t- I mean, I was trying to get capture. the detail. Right. Well, you know, Mark said he sent the TARDIS to me. Um, which that's always a good bet because Doctor Doctor Who I've had about one billion Doctor Who dreams in my life. Um, that's awesome. And uh, a fall hiking scene with steps for Wendy. Oh. So that okay. So I did have a staircase. You, I did, with the boulder staircase. And you did have a hike. Yeah, I did. Okay. So you did so have a hiking dream. Possible. So Mark, that's our first. Okay, that's our first hit. hit. That's our first potential hit tonight. Mark sending the staircase. Well done. Well done. Um. And, you know, Andy, the scantily clad woman, that could be any night. Uh, so but that's going to be a half hit. That's going to be a half hit because that's going to be my dreams anyway. Oh, fuck. Um, okay, moving on to uh, the next day. Uh, Thursday, um, I dreamed I went to a volleyball court where I ran into a couple of friends. And the, one was a guy, one was a girl. The girl uh, had a new... She had a new boyfriend, and the guy had a new girlfriend. And the girl's boyfriend had strange birthmarks on his face, but it didn't seem like that big of a deal. It was just like a couple big birthmarks. Uh-huh. And we all went to an indoor volleyball place. Uh, my cousins were there. Wendy, you showed up. Ben showed up. We all were drinking dark beer that wasn't very good. <laughs> um, Snoop Dogg's daughter was there running an open mic. What? And somebody was performing, and she was just like just ridiculing. This person wasn't very good, and she was just making fun of. So Snoop Snoop Dogg's daughter was being cruel. Oh my goodness! Uh, my friend said that he had proposed to his new girlfriend in Cincinnati on the Fourth of July at a pimp's concert, and I said that sounds nice. Cool. Um, 
Then the girl's new boyfriend with the with the birthmarks, he performed a karaoke version of Shoot to Thrill by ACDC. Nice. But the thing is, everybody got excited about it. Like they were thinking, this is awesome. Like people were coming out of the other bars on the street like to listen to this guy sing Shoot to Thrill. And I was like jealous. I'm like, well, what, what's so hot about this guy with the birthmarks? Because I thought it was pretty mediocre. Oh, dear. Um, and then another guy showed up and started singing with him. And he had the birthmarks on his face too. And they started flashing silver. Whoa, That's when I realized they were aliens. And the, reali- the reason that everybody loved their version of Shoot to Thrill is because it was mind control. Oh my God, that's an awesome dream, Mike. So, um, sci fi. <laughs> then my buddy, that, uh, that when that was over, I was like, okay, aliens, great. Um, then my, my friend that had proposed to a girl at the Pimps concert, uh, he was driving everybody home in a bus. Uh, it was daylight, we had a long trip home. Uh, the road stopped. He said he had to take a left. And we did. I saw that the bridge wasn't there, just like the supports, not the bridge. And he's like, that's no problem. We'll just jump from support to support. And I'm like, okay. And then as we were falling and realizing, oh, that's, that plan's not going to work, that's when I woke up. Wow. So, that's intense dream. <laughs> I don't know if there's any hits there, particularly oh. unless anybody had any strange alien. Uh, right, Scott, people excited about karaoke. Very alien. Nice. Right? Mike, you know, that could be a good inspiration for some uh, science fiction, you know, short story. Or- it could be, but, you know, or, or, or like a, a, a film short, but getting the, getting the rights to shoot the thrill would be very expensive. <laughs> it would. <laughs> so maybe like a little, not like a, you know, paperback book. Or right. No, it just made me laugh. Like I was like, what's these, why is everybody getting so excited about shoot the thrill? I'm like, yeah, it's a great song, but these guys aren't even hitting it. That's a hard song to sing. And then all of a sudden their birthmarks started like, like getting silver in and out. And I'm like, Oh God. Well, what I like about it is that they use the mind control to make people like (laughs) their karaoke. karaoke. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Sharon, when I'm excited about karaoke, it usually means I'm very drunk. (laughs) <laughs> I think that's the only thing that keeps karaoke in business. Iris, the silver could have been a hit on your image from Allison. Oh, interesting. It, it, that was kind of an alien looking thing. Uh, I mean, devilish. Yeah, a devilish guy. And a face. Wendy, anything from you on Thursday that... Oh, you're going to like this one. Okay, I, no. It's not as long. Don't that's worry. That's all right. It's not, it's not as long. But um, Okay, so... Sunspot was playing at Club Tavern for Mike's birthday. Hey, all right. That's <laughs> something we had done for a few years. Right. We've done that a number of times. Um, of course, the layout was totally different. And where the drummer was set up in this weird little cubby hole. So it was kind of like a stall. Almost, yeah. Like just surrounding, directly surrounding the drums. So I was like, I, it even had like sides to it. Kind of like um, I put, it reminded me kind of of Mr. Roberts. Like the way oh, that sure. they used to have the, the bands, but it was smaller, so just the drummer fit in there. So um, on break, I went to the bar to order shots uh, for a birthday toast, and I ordered Jameson for some reason, which is we- not typical for us, I guess. But And uh, the bartenders took forever. At the Club Tavern. Yeah, That's, no. Talk about a dream come true. It was, it was, yes, there's a lot of reality woven in here, but this was like, for like, we were on break and it was like 45 minutes because I was just trying to get their attention and I couldn't um, <laughs> get the, the, but I was like, we had it. It was the last set and I'm like, we have to do the birthday toast. So uh, I waited and waited and there were a couple of bartenders that we know. They weren't the normal club tavern sure. bartenders. Probably people we know um, from other places. Two guys and a woman, um, both or all three of them were from other venues we played okay. too, by the way. But uh, so I asked for, and I asked for the biggest water they had, and they made this special weird fish bowly thing for me. Like, that was just water. And then... Um, there wasn't a fish inside the water had... bowl, was there? What? I just think if they gave you a fish bowl full of water, it would have been funny if in your dream you're sitting there like, oh, how funny it's a fish bowl, and you're drinking it, and then you look down there's a fish in it. No, no. That would be weird, though. Um, so then as I was running back to the stage after I finally got the shots, I spilled... I spilled the shots almost completely, and then um, 
then I was back in the drum cubby and there was a photo hanging up that I had taken at a previous show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was like a drummer cam or something, but then, um, but the, at the bar, when I was waiting for the shots, another friend of ours showed up and this is, this is the cool part in front of him. There was this little like tequila dispenser. Okay. I like it already. That the bartenders would use. Like it it was kind of like a soda fountain, but it was just different tequilas. And there were all these like, shot glasses sitting around from people because they were like busy they didn't have time to clean up so um our friend was <laughs> taking the empty tequila like shot glasses and just and accidentally filling them up <laughs> filling them up and like dispensing them to people <laughs> all right so, that that's it for that one not uh, not a whole lot of it was just really weird because the layout was so different and strange and sure just, uh, you know but the actual narrative not that far off from from reality that we've experienced no not not at all really that's over and over. so that's pretty fun so wendy um i don't know if we have any we don't have any hits from thursday morning i don't think so no unfortunately that was a little too close to reality <laughs> now now friday morning i uh i slept for nine hours so i had a bunch of dreams cool. and in one i was participating in a game show where we had to run an obstacle course um <laughs> So these giant, Double dare. like yeah, but the, these there are obstacles in space. It was almost like the Rainbow Road from Mario Kart, like where we're going through it. And um, on there, and but the thing is, there was someone trying to kill you when you were doing the obstacle course, and it was so more like Blade Runner in here. Yeah, no, just like chasing you, like there was somebody chasing you in the obstacle course, and um, the person trying to kill you. Was Robert Downey Jr. And so, like, wow. he would say jokes and stuff like that to, like, get you because you're like, oh, yeah, he's on your side or whatever. Or, like, he's your buddy. No, <laughs> he was trying to kill you. And so, um, that dream, the Rainbow Road uh, from Mario Kart. And then the second dream, I was working, it was at a cooperative working space in a gigantic blue room. Um, that was about it. You slept there, though, in the gigantic blue room. It's like you'd sleep ah, at the working cool. space. Um, okay. And then I was at a restaurant in a foreign country. My dad was there. Ben showed up. Wendy, you showed up. Uh, the, a bunch of young people came in. This is funny because it's a week after my birthday. A bunch of young people came in and... Uh, they looked at me like I was old as hell. <laughs> okay. Um, and then the place flooded. And then we were all swimming. Um, and hanging out in there. So the place flooded. We were all swimming. Um, and then I ended up taking a cab somewhere. And it was a shared ride. And I realized I forgot my shoes in the cab. And then they, and they took off. And so I had like the, but the, the taxi stand for some reason had a shoe store. So I'm like, oh, this is fantastic. So I went in there and I was starting to look at shoes when somebody poked me with an umbrella. I turn around, I break the umbrella and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? And it's Charlie Sheen. And I'm like, you have a lot of celebrities. They just show up, right? I just show up. I'm like, hey, Charlie Sheen's here. I'm like, what a, um, but it was 2004, like I guess I was like, oh, because it, it wasn't the present day. It was like years ago. So I was like, oh, should I warn him about not going crazy on the set of My Two Dads? Or what was the name of his show? Oh, that's right. Yeah, no, uh, Two and a Half Men. Two and a Half Men. My Two Dads was a different show with Paul Reiser, I think. <laughs> and and so I was like, I was like, oh, do I have time to warn him to be like, Charlie, don't, you know, lay off the cocaine and don't. You know, ruin yeah, yourself. In trouble. Uh, but then I realized it was 2014. It wasn't before 2011. I'm like, oh, he's already screwed. So I had to buy him a new. Uh, I had to buy him a new umbrella. And then I woke up. Wow. So, anyway, uh, that's uh, that's what that Friday morning. Everything from Robert Downey Jr. trying to kill you, to Charlie Sheen and broken umbrella, and feeling old watching young people dance before a place floods. So, oh, I don't think there's any hits. I don't think there's any hits on Friday. Dang. I uh, Friday was my 
didn't remember. Didn't remember? Okay, day. sure. Yeah, one of one of the two days that I didn't remember. So, I got nothing for Friday. <laughs> um, Saturday. Did I dream? Yep, I dreamt on Saturday. Um, I was in a college journal, journalism class, and Linda from the Minneapolis Ghost Walk was the teacher. Two of my ex-girlfriends were in the class as well. Oh, boy. Uh, ben was in the class with us, and I was doing badly in it because I couldn't figure out the assignments, and I didn't know what I was supposed to do, so I was taking forever. Um, but when people asked the teacher questions, the police would come in and drag them away. And so they, somebody was nice enough to help me with my assignment, and he asked a question. The police dragged him away. And I was like, uh, on the way out, I was talking to another girl in the class. And I said, hey, should we bail him out or anything? Like, why did he go to jail? And she goes, he's rich. He doesn't need our bail money. And I'm like, okay, you're nice. Uh, so I, I walked to my car to drive home from the class. And I felt embarrassed that I didn't finish the assignments. Um, especially because there were ex-girlfriends in the class and they would see me fail. Oh, man. So, uh, I don't know if there was a hit in there, but there's definitely something Freudian. <laughs> uh, Scott says, on Friday, I tried to send Wendy an empty void, and it worked. Nice. Terry. Yep. Terry, you're very wise here. Never change the future through changing the past. First oh, rule of time. Yeah, right. that's right. You don't know where it's going to lead. You're going to get the de delicate sound of thunder or whatever. Um where you step on the butterfly, uh, like that, like that Ray Bradbury story. Oh, Stacy, funny weirdness for sure. Stacy, cheers to you. One, cheers, two, Stacey. three, oofta, Stacy. Well, I did have a dream that night. I just forgot to sure. write it down. Sure, didn't time, get it. So, and who knows? And then I hopefully that wasn't the night that all the hits came in. And so November 29th, I, so Sunday, I did not remember any dreams. Wendy, did you have any Sunday dreams? Oh, actually, well, I had the Saturday, oh, Saturday okay. morning when I woke up. Tell me you saw a frog. I didn't see a frog. Or well, I might A have. plague doctor? This one is very sketchy. My recollection was sketchy. So all I had was staying at a hotel. There was a funeral also happening there. All right. And my sister was there, and uh, she was, like, taking a bath. And she was, like, in the bath all night. So I thought maybe she fell asleep in there. But I knocked the door, and she's like, yeah, I'm good. Just relaxing. Okay. And that's all I remember. Okay. <laughs> so any bath? Well, there was a bathtub for Andy. Oh, that's true. Okay. There was a bathtub from Andy with a girl in it. And it, a girl from The Sims. So The Sims is a family-type game. So... I'm gonna give it. A, I'm gonna give it a hit. I'm gonna give it a hit. <laughs> we got two hits. Wendy, you got all the hits so far. You're the hiking hit. You're the bathtub yeah. hit, and I'm the guy who dreams about Mario Kart and celebrities. So. Well, we still have a few days left. We still have a couple days. Review. So you might have some hits in there, guys. Um, Monday when I woke up, uh, the dream was about a girl joining a ska band. And I don't know, she needed me to help her find a trumpet or something. And then she was going to go play at the frequency with Four Aspirin Morning. She was going to do that. Oh. I was like, oh, well, who's the only ska band I know? Um, so dream one was about that. Dream two, I was playing a string bass and hanging out on a path. Um, ben was there uh, overlooking the city. We could see um, a ton of different cities from there it was like oh we're so high we can see cities across the united states so you can see milwaukee we can see cool. chicago from the um and then uh i was helping a girl work on her movie for her college project uh do the next day about some famous socialist she was interested in uh, i said i'd help her and i tried to get footage of downtown milwaukee because it had a bunch of socialist mayors she eventually got tired fell asleep and gave up on the whole project hmm. Um, dream three, I was at a convention and it took place, uh, across the street from Celery Hall where we used to live. Um, but it wasn't in Vilas or anything like that, which was, or the humanities building, which was near there. It was just in this big convention hall. 
Um, I needed to get an acoustic guitar fixed. And so I brought over an acoustic guitar. Um, during the convention, I had to room with three different people who I didn't really know. Um, and they, uh, but they, that's never fun. they all seemed very cool, though. Oh, maybe it is fun. Um, <laughs> one night I got really drunk, and I must have talked a lot. And so uh, somebody said, you're very basic to me. Um, Ouch. Yeah. Rude. But then we were going to have a sh- I was going to make it. I was going to be like, okay, well, maybe I'm pretty basic, but I'm in a cool band. And so we were going to play a show that night <laughs> with other bands that had songs inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. It was called Cthulhu Fest. That's awesome. And I went to the um, place to get the acoustic guitar where it was being fixed. And then the guy was working on a string bass. He saw me and he dropped the string bass and he broke it. And I'm like, well, that sucks. And that's when I woke up. So that was huh. uh, Monday morning's dream. Mm, I don't think there were any hits in there. No, there's not. I'm, I'm, I mean, Cthulhu, uh, nope. I mean, instrument, but we are in a band. So Yeah. the instrument thing, yeah. Okay, when... More from your dream recollection? Um, okay, I didn't. I didn't have any notes from Sunday morning, but I are we on Sunday or Monday or what? Well, I I mean I went to Sunday to Monday, so I'm out of dreams because this morning oh, okay. this morning I woke up and I was dreamless. I've got Monday and, and today. Okay, yes, well, so. Wendy, let's see. We need a couple yeah. of hits. Hopefully, a uh, big house, maybe a, okay. a double chimneyed house. Well, I it, this one did take. Uh, Cthulhu Fest. <laughs> All right, Terry, we'll let you know. We'll see you at Cthulhu Fest. Uh, okay, Monday at childhood home. At my childhood home. And there was a giant sewing machine table with this teeny tiny little sewing machine in it. And uh, my dad asked if my sister and I would like it. Oh. We were, and we were still like in our childhood bedrooms. Sure. Like, so, uh, so. Was it your real childhood bedrooms or was it... Like, uh, you thought it was your childhood bedroom, but really it was like some totally different place. You, well, you know what I mean? It actually, it was very similar. Okay, it's very similar. All right. Because I always dream like I'm back in my childhood house or whatever, and it's not a house. It's like an underground apartment, <laughs> you know, oh, or cool. weird things. But uh, yeah, so it was, it was like the sewing machine table also had a sink type bowl built in, which kind of made it look like a wet bar. <laughs> okay. Um, and the machine had all these electronics connected, and after turning it on for a bit, it started sparking and it almost caught fire. Then I realized it was this tiny little machine that would be perfect for sewing small stuff like COVID masks. Okay, there. <laughs> and I wanted it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Give me that sewing machine. So, no. Yeah. I've been doing a lot of sewing lately, so it's not totally surprising. Sure. But uh, the, the thing that was weird about it was the bowl, the sink sink like bowl like as part of the sewing machine table sure like and then of course the the like circuit boards and stuff that all started like whirring and sparking and i don't know okay so this morning this is this is like my favorite dream okay uh, but we saved the best for this last one, yeah it's kind of a nar- it has a real narrative to it but it it's not satisfying but that's kind of how dreams are oh wait hold on okay, iris so- coming through you thought that a COVID mask, plague mask. Oh my gosh. So you my go. sister that sent is, you the is. plague mask. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So I don't know. I'm going to give that. What is the first of all, it's not fair. I'm stuck getting poked with an umbrella by Charlie Sheen. And Wendy is getting your psychic messages from dreams. Hey, that plague picture though. I think I think he was holding like a a stick kind of thing too. Maybe maybe the umbrella was mm. some form of that. I don't know. And Pam says that in addition to the haunted two chimney house image I sent to Mike, I sent a photo of a creepy Ooh. porcelain Mardi Gras mask to Wendy. Oh, I didn't. See I that. didn't see that one either, Pam, in, Sorry, in the Pam. in the other side podcast. Oh, but I mean, you know. the, your intention is what counts. You, you know. Um, so. That's funny. The masks and Mark. 
That is a hit. I agree. I think we got. I think Wendy, you got right. three hits. The hits just keep on coming with Wendy. The plague mask, totally. Okay, cool. So, all right. So here's one where um, I was living in a college dorm. Okay, I remember those days. Not not any of the ones that actually we've lived yeah. in, but just you know a bit the, like an institutional type residence. Okay. Oh gosh, this one's. So there was a, a big announcement made, and uh, a friend of our musician friend of ours from Cincinnati mm. was awarded this prestigious astrophysics trophy for a discovery he had made. Um, it was like a really huge deal, some kind of like I don't even remember. I don't know what it was, but he got this trophy and everything, and it got put in the, the there was like a trophy room where it got put on display there. Where all the great um, astrophysics trophies go. <laughs> yeah. So sometime later, a couple of strange guys showed up and asked where the trophy was. I showed them the trophy room, and they proceeded to start disassembling things. Ooh. Um, but I grabbed the the main trophy. It was which was like this little triangle thing, kind of like a, a Star Trek. Um, yeah, the right the start the, the 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 Federation symbol. Yeah, it was it was like uh, it was like that. But I grabbed it and pocketed it um, <laughs> before they could take it. And then I hit it, and they were really mad at me. And they were, you know, they, they, I told them I couldn't let them take it without his permission first. Sure. Because they were trying to act like, oh, no, it's cool. We're just coming in here. And, like, we're just going to, you know. Um, but it turned out that they were two guys that had also been up for the same award, and they were bitter that they lost because they thought they deserved oh. it more. So they came to steal, steal it away. Some drama. Um, then here's more. I just recorded this random scene. That's what dreams are about where Scott and I were sitting in a car in a parking lot and we were watching this warehouse and there were work like workers rolling out these giant barrels, kind of like construction barrels. Kind of reminded me a little bit of Breaking Bad, you know, when they have the big yeah, barrels that use the transport. Barrels them. of methamphetamine. Then I was in another friend of ours, uh, female friend's apartment where I went into the pantry for some reason and there were ants everywhere forming a pattern on the floor. One of her roommates totally freaked out, and they ended up moving. Oh. Okay. So I thought maybe somebody had sent ants or... <laughs> well, or we do have the frog. Let's... Um... Well, okay. Okay. So then back at the dorm, I went into this bathroom. Oh, a bathroom again. But that was... That's weird, because that image was for you, right? But anyway. It's all right. I mean... Okay. Intentions, I intention. Not that weird to dream about a bathroom, but uh, I went into a bathroom and Mike, you were in there. Hey. And you were talking to our friend who's house it was who had won the award. Oh, okay. But he, his eyes were all watery because he had been crying, and um, the the bad guys had like lied to him and told him that his <laughs> award was being revoked. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to tell him no, I still had it, but um, I didn't want it in front of the bad guys, so I waited. And then I just then the next line is something about a wristwatch. No idea. Okay. Okay. So I stepped outside to try to call her friend to tell him that I had the, the, the award. trophy, but yeah, but I had my old old phone, which was like not a smartphone; it was just a candy bar style phone, sure. and I didn't have his number in there. And then the another guy that was linked to the crooks approached me and started trying to convince me that I needed to hand over the award, but I continued to refuse. He followed me back into the dorm. Getting in the dorm was weird. There was not a normal door, but it was more of like a grid that had these all these little doors, and you had to um, it made it hard to get in because you had to climb up to go through. And I had the war the uh, the little trophy in my pocket, and I was scared it would fall out, but I made it. Okay. So then I was back in the dorm again, and I dyed my hair black with a shock of white and also neon blue. Ooh. I thought it was awesome. Sure. Oh, and then just in the awards hall, another person that was in there was a high school friend of mine that I haven't thought about in, like, a long, long time. But he was, like, one of the super nerd, smartest people. So he probably, he might have been, like, up for the award, too. I don't know. Just and then I sent a greeting. I had a greeting card for my brother. But I just, for some reason, I ran into him and I handed it to him instead of mailing it. And that's, oh, that's Well, that saved you some postage. But, Huh? That saved you some postage. <laughs> hey, speaking of Heidi, you appeared in one of Wendy's dreams. Hi, Heidi. 
Uh, and so, Heidi, you're one of our hits. <laughs> yeah. You are one of our hits. Okay, then there, there is another dream. Okay. After that. Keep them coming. It's not as long. I know these are these are probably just boring everybody to sleep because you know they always. This say is the things to not this talk is the, the this is the science. Nobody ever says <laughs> don't. Dreams. Nobody ever says don't talk about your dreams at a party. Uh, yeah, they do. I don't know. Not my parties. Because it's not interesting to anybody but you. Fair but enough. This, this is different because we're right, this is our job. studying it. So, um, okay, the other dream, I was staying at the Ho Chunk Casino Hotel, and uh, I was awakened by the sound of Native American singing chanting. So I went outside on the balcony and listened to try to figure out what was going on, and I saw a procession go by with a woman that was carrying a big glass, glass tube, kind of like a vessel. It looked like, kind of looked like one of those old, like, I don't know what you call it, like a pitcher that holds water or whatever. Okay, a jug? Yeah, I guess it's just a jug. But <laughs> I guess it's just a jug. Weird. It's not the spectacular jug that was in my dream. It wasn't made out of pottery. It was like glass. Okay. It was strange. So then um, stopped at the grocery store. Another friend of ours, a bartender from a, another venue, was working behind the bar. At the grocery he store. Some white yeah. That's how you know you. That's how you know you shop at High V or Festival too much. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was just. It was like the the liquor store area, but it was a bar. Sure. So you had to go up and ask them for the bottle. Well, we've we've, we've been to the bar at the wine. grocery store more than once. Yeah, to take to the neighbors when we got home. Then then for some reason, Carter Beauford, the drummer from Dave Matthews Band, was with us. Nice. We were in his car, and his sister was driving. She got out, and the car was still rolling, and so she chased chased it and jumped back in to stop us from hitting traffic and then some of their other sisters were wandering around and one of them threw these little knives at her and i had the impression she was going after carter so we had to warn him fair enough save carter beauford yeah <laughs> i have no idea well that's great when um you did have several hits masks girl in the bathtub heidi um, <laughs> and a hiking, <Yeah. clears throat> and a hiking dream with stairs. So we do have uh, at least three. I hope we didn't. Three hits to Wendy. Uh, Iris is like, I should try this. Remembering dreams is an often thing for me, but I always love it, and it is fun. So, yeah. um, Iris, and that's we're gonna. So we want to get to the challenge for this week. So okay, so we have a couple of hits. That's pretty fun. So we did have some success with um, our first C on the other side dream experiment. Oh, and Stacey, I hope we didn't miss any pictures people sent because I'm worried now that the email. Yeah, was. Stacy said uh, I haven't been around for a while. Um, are we supposed to be sending you two psychic images, and is this going to continue next week? Well, next week we're hoping that everybody tries to do a lucid dream for the dream experiment for next week. Um, oh, but we could do this again. Oh, in the future. we definitely will do this again. <clears throat> I want to do something where Wendy and I try to send you guys images. Oh, like uh, upcoming day. but let's do a lucid dream next week so let's mix it up um, Pam also says the chimney house is built on sacred Native American land oh. okay so yeah, that, the Ho-Chunk that. connection I mean Sharon says we were talking about Ho-Chunk last week but ah good point but also that doesn't mean that uh, the two chimney house didn't also kind of trigger something because Wendy went have, yeah that's when have you stayed at the Ho Chunk Casino? Besides the time we played there at um, the Is the Corvettes party, I think that's the only time okay. I've ever stayed there. So, like I would like I've dreamed about Ho Chunk Casino, but I've also stayed there about twenty five times. Right, right. Well, that's probably that probably is where it, the idea is in my head. <laughs> sure, because you're always I've been there a lot. <laughs> you're always going there. Um, Yes. So this week, all right, in the last few minutes, I just kind of want to get to the experiment we should do for this week is um, let's all try to have a lucid dream and then we can read them out on the air next week and then go over them. And you guys can send them to us, info at othersidepodcast.com. You can send it to us over Facebook too. I mean, anytime we can get them and we can talk about them and we're going to analyze them for you. Well, let's also try to uh, po post some 
in the in our Facebook group, let's post some guidelines for lucid dreaming ways that you can encourage doing. You know, yeah, because because if people aren't right, and the thing good at it, it's like okay, just just lucid dream tonight. You know, the the big guy, the guy that's really done lucid dreaming stuff is um, Stephen Laberge, and I believe he was at the um, uh, University of Hawaii where he did, and I have his book. Right over there on lucid, like it's like a, it's like the only book that's done on like how to lucid dreaming from a scientist. Oh, wow. um, and it's about twenty five years old. I mean, it's an older book now, but those techniques still work. Um, I will post some tips and everything like that for everybody to do lucid dreaming. But also, there was some lucid dreaming research done at the University of Wisconsin to see like what people like when they know they're lucid dreaming. What does it look like? And actually, there was an experiment done. Um, at Stanford and UW here, and uh, one of the, uh, so Stephen LaBerge, he was part of it, so I don't think he was in Hawaii at this point, like he had moved on. Um, Benjamin Bear is the other doctor, but the, and he's from UW, I think, but the third doctor is Dr. Philip Zimbardo. From, he's the guy that did, and we talk about him in the podcast a bunch, he's the guy that did the Stanford prison experiment in the first place. Mm. He's also the guy that did those hypnotizing experiments where seeing if people could take more pain under hypnosis than they could without. And he's got this sweet black goatee. And when one of my friends worked at the APA as a book editor, um, he was the president of the American Psychological Association. And she's like, oh, you know about Dr. Zimbardo? She's like, he's like a really nice guy. And I'm like, really? Because in his videos, he comes off like an evil genius. <laughs> she's like, no, he's super nice. He's, he's great. And I'm like, oh, you get to work with that. You know, she got to work with him. Um, so that was always fun to talk about. That. But so they were doing research into what lucid dreams looked like. And they were doing stuff with lucid dreamers and asking them to... Try to follow, um, like if in, in a lucid dream, you would say you'd see a bird and you would try to follow the bird with your eyes. If you knew, and, and so they predetermined these kind of things and they wanted to see a couple of, th- they wanted to see if um, your behavior of your eyes in a lucid dream acted more like it did when you were awake oh, than when you're normally dreaming. Because when you're normally dreaming, you know how... You know, there's a whole REM thing where you look crazy because your eyes are all, you know, your eyeballs are moving up and down and left and right with rapid eye movement. And they wanted to see if, while people were inside a lucid dream, did their eyes, which is the only thing they could track, behave more like they did when they were awake. And they found that when people were in the lucid dream, their eyes, and they were um, like tracing, you know, they were they were looking at the things they said that they were trying to create, um, their eyes acted like they did when they were awake. So you can, the lucid dream is almost a state of consciousness, of regular consciousness inside the dreamland. It's like the ultimate virtual reality. And that's what they did, that's the experiment. And then part of that experiment was done right here in Madison. And I just thought that was really fun and cool. interesting. Um, Let's do some more experiments here in Madison. Right. So I think we should all tr- we and um, we should all try to do a lucid dream this week. Now, what are some? I think the easiest way to do that is if you wake up before you're supposed to wake up. And I do this almost every night. I wake up at like four thirty or something, and I don't wake up mm-hmm. until six thirty. I'm like, ah. Oh. And sometimes you're up for like 15 minutes and like, should I read to try to fall back to sleep? Yeah. You know, should I just roll around for a while? But if you realize that when you go back into sleep after you're awake for a little while, your chances of having a lucid dream are like 100%. Like not 100, but like 95%. Like the, that is your best opportunity to have a lucid dream. If you've woke up in the middle of the night and then go back to sleep, that dream when you go back to sleep is... But how do you like gain control of it because i well i think that's the reality check that's a couple times during the day you say like is this real look around and um check your watch maybe if you wear a watch or if you have a clock where you are look at the clock and look away look back at the clock if it's the same time you're not dreaming if it's a different time, you are dreaming. Look at a sign. Mm. If you look at a sign, 
um, and look away and look back. If the sign says the same thing, you're in reality. If it doesn't, you're dreaming. And like 80% of the time in my dreams, when I look back and forth at something and read it, it's different mm -hmm. than it was before. And then I realize like, oh, I'm dreaming. And then I try to do something. So I would say that everybody, the thing we should try to do is fly. Whoa, cool. Okay, and, and also I would request that if anyone has success, you know, please share your, your techniques or your, you know, any, any, anything you can share about your experience with the rest of us because, yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm getting closer because I'm able to now re-enter dreams after waking up. Okay. So my alarm goes off and then I'm like, oh no, I don't want to be done with that yet. And then I drift back into it and it continues where I left off and I can do it like a bunch of times. So I feel like it's, it's a, that's going to be a good opportunity to try to, but the tricky part that I'm not sure of is how to actually like be <laughs> right. lucid in the dream. But I'll, I'll try the clock thing. Try the clock thing. Try the reading thing. Do a couple of reality checks during the day. Like Mark says, that requires doing that activity during the days as well. Yeah, it's true. But it, oh, good point. it's worth it because you get to have an awesome Heidi, a flying dream like Heidi. <laughs> Cool. And then she realized that she could mess with people. Right. That's the that's when that's when oh, lucid that dreams lucid. get fun. That's when lucid <sighs> dreams get fun. Um, all right. So we are gonna uh, kick off and get to our Patreon hangout coming out. Um, everybody out there, uh, if you're interested in joining us for our next Patreon hangout, um, make sure uh, you can check it out. Patreon.com/sunspotmusic, and um, you can join up and hang out and we can you know do more stuff and we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing some lucid dreaming tips um in the patreon this week and we're all gonna give it a try so let's see i believe i can fly if it's okay to still sing r kelly i'm not sure if it i believe yeah, i can touch the sky um although now facebook's gonna censor our uh <laughs> that's true that's true all right uh real quick vic hello from san antonio good luck to you hey, vic. vic congratulations on the move um, and hope that went yeah. well for you. Um, and uh, Terry, any tips for re-entering dreams? Can we do that next Ooh. week and talk about it? Yes, that is. Let's write yeah, that that's down. A great idea for talking about re-entering dreams. Um, also, wanted to give, I have to think about that. Yeah. Wanted to give a show, shout out uh, to our man Joel. Um, Wendy, you were talking about like trying to hey, like sounds like a normal sunspot show in Minneapolis. Oh, you, that was the the club tavern dream. <laughs> yeah, you were talking about the club tavern dream. Yeah, Joel's Joel's been to some Joel's choice. been some choice establishments. <laughs> the Terminal Bar, Big V's. Uh, <laughs> right. He, he's seen us. Wow, he's seen us. The Red Sea. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, yeah. And our best and our second best. So, okay, we'll see you guys, we'll see you you guys in the Patreon. Everybody else, we will see you on Thursday for Thirsty Thursday. Uh, and Ben will join us for some, we'll just, you know, we're starting to get in the Christmas spirit. And so, oh um, boy. yep, it's going to be an Advent calendar of fun this Thursday. We'll see everybody in a little bit. And um, everybody else, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you on the other side.